to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Missoula County acknowledges that this event takes place in the Aboriginal territories of the Salish and Cleese Bay people. Um, there, we have four public announcements. Um, we'll start with Cheryl. Hello, everyone. If you are joining us on this meeting virtually today, instructions for turning on closed captioning are on your screen. If you are joining us in person, we'll have closed captioning on all the screens here in the Sophie and Louise room. There will be an opportunity to speak during the meeting for a public uh, comment virtually and in person. We ask that all speakers today speak slowly and clearly. This helps with the accuracy of the closed captioning. If you're on Microsoft Teams, if you'd like to speak when discussion has been open for public comment, we ask that you use the raise hand feature. This is a small hand button. If you're calling in on the phone, you'll need to hit star five to raise your hand. Once called upon, you'll need to hit star six to unmute. We also have assisted listening devices if you need one. If you have any questions, please find me during the meeting and let me know. Thank you. Back to Juan. Thanks, Cheryl. Would you like to read the DV proclamation? Whereas, without regard to age, race, gender, religion, or economic status, the issue of domestic violence affects thousands of Missoula County residents, and as victims endure abuse from a spouse or partner, it also impacts their families and communities. And whereas physical violence, sexual violence, and or stalking in intimate relationships affect one in three women and one in four men at some point in their lives. In Montana, intimate partner physical violence, also known as IPV, sexual violence and or stalking affect 37% of women and 30% of men. The probability of intimate relationship femicide is at least five times higher when the abusers have access to firearms. And whereas Native Americans in Montana and across the United States experience intimate partner violence at disproportionately high rates, 84% of Native American and Alaska Native women will experience domestic violence, sexual violence, and stalking. 56% of Native American and Alaska Native men will experience some form of IPV. Native women are 2.5 times more likely than other groups of women to be assaulted in the United States, and homicide is the third leading cause of death for Native women. The origins of domestic violence and abuse of Native people can be traced to colonization, including the introduction of alcohol, forced removal of children, boarding schools, loss of land, culture, language, and traditional ways of life. And whereas domestic violence has widespread immeasurable impacts on society, including causing lasting trauma, loss, grief, physical injuries that may be disabling, and lifelong psychological injuries. Further, these impacts take an economic toll on victims. When accounting for medical costs, lost productivity, legal fees, and property loss, domestic violence victims incur lifetime costs of nearly $82,000. And the United States incurs $3.6 trillion in costs. Yet dollars cannot measure the lifelong impacts on victims and their children who experience trauma from domestic violence in their homes. And whereas, according to research, domestic violence can be decreased by building communities where people are connected, caring, and supportive of one another. And whereas every day in Missoula County, people and organizations support those who have been affected by domestic abuse by offering services and resources, including therapy, legal counsel, education, housing, advocacy, and medical care. Therefore, be it resolved, we, Missoula County and the City of Missoula, do hereby proclaim the month of October as National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, dated this third day of October, 2024, signed Andrea Davis, Mayor of the City of Missoula, Dave Strohmeyer, Josh Slodnick, Juanita Vero, Missoula County Commissioners. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to speak to National Domestic Violence Awareness Month? They're in room or on the line. Okay, there's one more proc or two more proclamations. Um, whereas Missoula County landowners and residents play a vital role in caring for our natural resources, and whereas there are exemplary land stewards throughout Missoula County engaging in voluntary projects and practices that protect and enhance our natural resources, and whereas Missoula County, through the Land Stewardship Award Program, 
wishes to recognize and thank these land stewards, as well as promote their stewardship success stories so that others may learn from them. And whereas the Missoula County Open Lands Citizen Advisory Committee reviewed the nominations and made a recommendation for the 2024 Land Stewardship Award winner, now, therefore, we, the Missoula Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim Bert Lindler as a recipient of the 2024 Missoula County Land Stewardship Award. We honor Bert Lindler's outstanding efforts in caring for the natural resources in Missoula County and for providing residents with an opportunity to learn from their successes. Dated this third day of October, 2024, your County Commissioners, Dave Stromar, Juanita Vero, and Josh Slotnick. Would anyone like to speak to this? Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on up to the microphone. Come on. Come on, Ann. <laughs> Thank you. I have a, a memory of coming down the trail from Heart Lake and running into Bert Lindler, and he uh, pulled me aside and talked to me all about the Great burn and showed me this map that he'd printed and I was like, Bert, I gotta keep hiking here. <laughs> Fantastic. Very enthusiastic. Well, we are looking forward to more celebrations. Um, Kaylee or anyone else from online or in the room like to speak to this? Yeah, I'm happy to speak. Um to a few of the main reasons. I can't cover all of the reasons that Bert Lindler was nominated for the Stewardship Award this year. Um, and also wanted to mention for any press that's at the meeting today or online that there will be an event tomorrow, um, which is the 4th of October at 3 p.m. at the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation to have a celebration for Bert and press is welcome to attend. Um, so Bert Lindler was nominated by Sarah Holden, who is a member of the Open Land Citizen Advisory Committee. And Bert was nominated in part for his extensive volunteer efforts that have um, impacted hundreds of really thousands of acres across a variety of ownerships, primarily but not limited to the North Hills and the lower and upper rattlesnake areas. And his efforts have uh, been around wildlife habitat improvement, noxious weed removal, um, that's included forest thinning projects, and um, really big multi-jurisdictional grant implementation um, with different agencies, as well as extensive work with the National Wildlife Federation and um, really volunteer management of their property for, I think, almost 20 years. Um, he's really contributed to substantial efforts to improve habitat for the 450 um, elk that live in the North Hills. And many people, when they heard about this uh, nomination, said Bert was the most energetic, passionate volunteer they have ever yes. met. Yes. Um, and so this is a really, this is an exciting day to be able to honor all of his work. Thanks. Thanks, Kaylee. And I've spent some time with Bert underneath the Reserve Street Bridge. So um, <laughs> also very, very enthusiastic in an urban environment. Good, good. One more proclamation. Yes, go. Whereas individual citizens play a vital role in caring for Missoula County public lands. And whereas their exemplary stewards throughout the county engaging in voluntary projects and practices that maintain and enhance our outdoor spaces. And whereas Missoula County, through the Parks and Trails Stewardship Award, wishes to recognize and thank these stewards, as well as promote their stewardship success stories, so others may learn and be inspired by their work. And whereas the Missoula County Parks and Trails Advisory Board reviewed the nominations for, the 20, for 2024 and made a recommendation for the recipient of the Parks and Trails Stewardship Award. Now, therefore, we, the Missoula Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim Jack Ballas and Doug Franzen as the recipients of the 2024 Missoula County Parks and Trails Stewardship Award. We honor Jack and Doug's decades of dedication to East Missoula Lions Park. From the, incep from the inception of the park, Jack and Doug have volunteered countless hours towards park maintenance and community events. Their commitment and work ethic has helped to make East Missoula Lions Park an anchor of the East Missoula community for generations to come. Dated this third day of October, 
Dave Strohmeyer, Juanita Vero, Josh Slotnick, your Missoula Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. Okay, anyone from Parks and Trails Advisory want to speak to this? Come on, Ron. <laughs> I hadn't expected to, but I, I'm, I'm, it's well worth talking about. Ron Slater, S-C-H-L-A-D-E-R. I am a member of the uh, Missoula County Parks and Trails Advisory Committee, and we are going to have a get-together for the awarding of this, this uh, at uh, Missoula Alliance Park. It is October the 9th, next Wednesday, at uh, 1.30, and we, we will... They will, the committee will award the, or the, I believe the county commissioner usually show up and then they award, a, a, give the award to these individuals and they were very well deserving and it'd be nice to go, everybody shows up out there because the park really looks a lot different than it did uh, 10 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, public comment on items not on the agenda? Our current claims list received as of September 4th, 2024 to September 24th, 2024 by the Commissioner's Office. Total $7,645,954.15. Um, we have three hearings and we'll start with Jenny Dixit. I guess the process here is we'll hear from staff and then the applicant, then we will open the public hearing and then close the public hearing and then discuss it and vote. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your patience. Um, this is, uh, first of all, my name is Jenny Dixon, planner with Planning Development Sustainability. I'm here to present a request from Roseburg Forest Products for a, a boundary line relocation at 3250-3300 Razor Drive. You will recognize this site um, as the Roseburg Forest Products um, that permanently closed earlier this year. The location is, um, as shown here, south of I-90, north of Broadway and the railroad, and east of Reserve Street. And it's um, most of their ownership is outlined in that darker black boundary. The area subject, showing the area subject to the um, boundary line relocation encompasses about 220 acres. Um, they own... I believe 13 tracks out here. They're asking for a boundary line relocation amongst nine of those tracks. Those tracks are reflected in COS 6982, which is a recent, a very recent um, survey, uh, I believe a retracement survey of their ownership. Uh, and that show, shows this the retracement of what their current tracks look like. Property is in an area with a land use recommendation uh, or designation in the land use element for heavy industrial. And that is how it is zoned. Uh, obviously, we're at the county commissioner's meeting, so this is in the county, but close to um, proximal to city land and actually surrounded on, on all sides by city um, Oops. So again, uh, this is the diagram of their existing nine tracks that they wish to do a boundary line relocation for. And um, some of the tracks are quite large, um, over you know, 100 and some acres, <clears throat> and some as small as uh, I think an acre or two. Ultimately, they wish to redraw the boundaries of those nine tracks to look like this. Um, and, uh, the applicant may be able to provide a better explanation for the reason or the basis for making those lines. Um, what I can tell you is that each of the tracks 
proposed here is greater than 20 acres, which will um, come come into play with sanitation or lack thereof, review, lack thereof, um, lack of sanitation review. The um, section of law, the reason this is here before you today is 763207, there's a subsection that requires um, the commissioners to take action on boundary line relocations in platted subdivisions where there's six or more tracks affected. And because there are nine tracks affected, we have by policy bring this to you. You've seen this before on several in the last few years. You're going to see some more. Um, I think we're we're entertaining another one. So, um, a, a, and what we do is we look at the evasion criteria and the rebuttable presumptions for um, boundary line relocation and determine after an evaluation if there are red flags raised in that evaluation that would indicate evasion. Of the three rebuttable presumptions and 18 evasion criteria, uh, only one of the um, criteria were tr triggered, if you will, or were, I could identify um, and possibly indicate evasion. Um, however, this is the most appropriate exemption to use for what they want to accomplish. And therefore, um, we did not identify this as evasion and in fact recommend approval with a motion on the screen before you today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would anyone from um, Roseburg like to say anything? Sure. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, Jamie Erbacher with WGM for the record. Uh, so as Jenny alluded to, this is a fairly straightforward request with no additional parcels being created. We are starting with nine parcels of record. We are ending with nine parcels of record. Um, all of the existing parcels are developable in their um, existing configuration, but this rearrangement of property boundaries will facilitate distribution of the land, <clears throat> excuse me, to the correct um, holding entities within the Roseburg Corporation. Um, so the mill property and the, the large berm that you see to the north and east, if you will, um, <clears throat> that sits on existing parcels of land, but it also occupies some of the vacant parcels of land that are around it. Um, so these elements of the property, they need to be held in a separate corporate entity for Roseburg's tax purpose purposes. Um, so the the boundary line relocation before you today um, is before you today because it affects more than five existing tracks. So in order to work through the jigsaw puzzle that we need to do here to create a single parcel for the mill proper, um, we need to shift each of the affected parcels. Um, we could have gone through and piecemealed these applications and had several applications come just to the planning office, um, but this is a much cleaner, much more straightforward process and in the end will result in the same configuration with less survey records, if you will. So available for any other questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Any other comments? Okay, should we close? Up? Oh, yes. Question for John. So I just wanted to oh, think I have this right, but I just wanted to get clear on our decisions based on this because there's been some uh, talk out there in the greater world on, uh, well, there's so much potential for all kinds of great things at this site. It's really big. It could be all kinds of things. Uh, you guys should condition this on something. And my sense is we can't do that. Uh, boundary line relocation is just that. And if basically, if I understand it right, if we start with a certain number of lots and end with a certain number of lots and all of them are at least 20 acres, we don't worry about sanitation. That's all there is to it. But I just wanted to make sure I understand that right. Yeah, you're correct, commissioners. You cannot um, add conditions on your approval or denial. It's a straight up or straight down Great. decision. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And bring up the motion. I'm happy to make it unless somebody else wants to. Thanks, Jenny. All right. Do we need to do any more public comment? Oh, good point. Is there any additional public comment before we close this? Okay. All right. 
I would move that the request by Roseburg Forest Products Company to utilize the relocation of common boundaries exemption on property legally described as tracks 2, 4, 5, and 7 through 12, Certificate of Survey number 6982, located at 3250 through 3300 Razor Drive, be approved based on the findings and conclusions in the staff analysis and as presented in the exemption application and affidavit. Second. There any further discussion comments in the room or online? Here's to clean and straightforward. Yeah, nice job. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Thank you, Jamie. Jenny. Thanks, John. Okay, our second one. Kyla, West Valley Community Council boundary change. All right, I am all set up. So Kyla Leonard's with Lands and Communities. I'm here for the West Valley Community Council boundary change consideration. First, I'll give you a brief high level overview of some of the background of where the council began and where we are going forward. Um, in 2008, a petition was received by the county commissioners from the community requesting consideration to establish a community council in the West Valley, Frenchtown area. Um, and then in March of 2008, the first public hearing was held expressing the desire um, to have this on a ballot for voter consideration. At that hearing, um, the boundaries for the West Valley Community Council were the Frenchtown School District. However, at that meeting, public comment came out expressing a desire to have two separate councils, one representing the Evero area and one French representing the Frenchtown West Valley District. Um, so that was um, denied at that time. In July in 2008, a second hearing was brought back forth with a resolution to place a new resolution on the November ballot with revised boundaries for voter precincts, which would allow two separate community councils. In November of 2008, voters approved the creation of the West Valley Community Council in the listed voter precincts. And then in March of 2009, the council held its first hearing. I just wanted to make a note that due to voter precinct changes, the history of this, that in 2003 and 2013, the boundaries of the community council had to be revised because precincts can change every 10 years. Um, so that is just a note for that. Okay, so bringing us to today, or in the year of 2024, in February of 2024, um, it was brought to the attention of the commission that some of the community members do not reside within any community council boundary due to the voter precincts and the boundaries that are currently um, with West Valley. So in March of 2024, the community council um, had some discussion at one of their meetings. And then in May of 2024, the community council provided a letter requesting a change to the council boundaries from voter precincts to the Frenchtown School District number 40. To note, this would not have been a this is not this was not available at that time. However, in June of 2024, the Evero Finley O'Keefe Community Council was dissolved due to lack of activity. Um, so now the West Valley Community Council and the Evero Community Council uh, boundaries would have not aligned, but now we are open for this consideration. So to give you an idea, the this is the current French town. West Valley Community Council boundaries, and this was the Evero Community Council boundaries. Um, the Evero Community Council um, primarily 
falls within this ever or excuse me our Lee school district with the exception of this lower portion here which does not fall within the our Lee school district so i wanted to highlight that one more this is the proposed boundary of school district 40 which is the frenchtown school district as you can see the new outline takes over part of the Everill Community Council and now encompasses a more inclusive community of uh, West Valley and Frenchtown area. This is just a topographical map of the new proposed boundary. Again, this is kind of the highlighted area of the new area that the school bound the school boundaries would encompass. And this is just a map of all of the community councils in Missoula County currently. This is West Valley over here, Sealy Lake to give context. So this is just the first hearing, um, just as a recommendation to open public comment, considering this resolution for the boundary change of the West Valley Community Council. Um, thus far, we've only seen, received one public comment and it was um, over concern of the representation of the Evero community, which I think I've highlighted, but there's, if there's any other questions, um, I will stop and pause for a moment. Thanks, Kyla. Any questions or comments on this? Yeah, ask ask you a question. So on the not including Evero, is this basically because the Evero Community Council is dissolved? There really was no interest in Community Council there any longer. Correct. The council had been inactive for approximately five years and we had membership issues and there just wasn't a desire for that community. However, the West Valley Community Council can still be a voice for that area and for those community members. Great. Thank you. Is there also a sort of a, a club or let's see, another organization in Evero? Yes, they have a community center club up there. They don't meet as often as the councils generally do, but they do have an active council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, so what's the process? Do we vote to, so it's just open, we, we claim it open. We don't have to vote on it. Oh, okay. The process is open. And I'm sorry, what's our date for this again? when we revisit this? So the West Valley Community Council is meeting next uh, next week, Thursday, October 10th. This The next hearing for this and close will be Thursday, October 24th. Any public comment or questions you can find on the Missoula County Voice. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Kyla. Kaylee Becker with an, uh, the Stowell MLR opens Base bond project. And Mark Schmidt. <laughs> Good afternoon. So uh, just as a brief introduction to the project, this is a proposal to use open space bond funds that were, were from the are from the 2018 open space bond. As a reminder, this is an open space bond that was approved by Missoula County voters via ballot initiative in November 2018 for the purpose of providing funds to pay costs of conserving, enjoying, and enhancing open space land to include providing public access to water and land, conserving agricultural lands, fish and wildlife habitat, and rivers, lakes, and streams, protecting scenic views, and making improvements to land acquired or designated as open space that are accessible to the public by purchasing land, easements, or other interests in land from willing landowners and paying for costs of improvements related to serving lands acquired or designated as open space. Um, so I am going to hand it over to the project applicant to go over the um, details of the project and then I'll give a staff report and I know there is an app um, that landowners are here as well as a representative from the open lands committee to um, present their recommendation. So I'll just share the presentation. Give me a minute. And I'm sorry, I said Schmidt and I meant Schiltz. I'm so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I was going to I was going to qualify that. <clears throat> 
All right. Well, thank you. My name is Mark Schultz. I work for the Montana Land Alliance. I run the Western office of MLR in Big Fork. Uh, our main office is in Helena. Um, we've been working in the Swan Valley, Missoula County since about 1993. Um, I'm really pleased to bring a project uh, for consideration for funding um, on behalf of Jeffrey and uh, Carol Stoll, who live in Condon. <clears throat> um, the the project itself is, is situated in the in the Swan Valley, just uh, just west of Condon. Uh, you might not be able to see this, but it's a yellow property there. Um, it's situated, you know, in in the Swan Valley. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems in Montana, and um, and this property is situated in a in a, in a place that's really going to benefit um, uh, both the work of MLR and other land trusts who've worked in that area. Um, the Swan Valley, incidentally, was the centerpiece of the uh, Montana Legacy Project back in the day. So. Uh, here's a little close the close up of the property and where it's where it's located. Um, it's the yellow um, property uh, on the, on this aerial. Um, it's located um, you know, directly adjacent to another MLR easement and there's other and other MLR easements are nearby as well as other conservation easements held by other organizations. Uh, this uh, this the, here again, the property is yellow here. MLR easements are the blue properties you can see on the map. Um, other conservation easement properties are in the pink and then um, forest service land is green in this map. So uh, the property currently is has no development on it whatsoever. There's no structures, no developments. It's, a, it's been a, a used for, for a working forest and, and recreational uses in the past. It's a, a property is a di diverse uh, uh, stand of con coniferous forest. And uh, the most significant feature on the on the property is is Glacier Creek, which runs from south to the north uh, and, and bisects the property. Um, this is a wetland map that shows uh, Glacier Creek. It, as it hits the swan here, just about a uh, you know, quarter mile north of the property, it actually braids throughout this property um, uh, and has an expanded river channel, uh, and which um, creates a, a, a riparian forest land that's um, for, critical for wildlife habitat. Um, it also joins with the, the wetlands on the, the, the rich or the, um, the Hosh property, which is a, another conservation easement actually owned by the Stoles as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the um, this is a land type map. This shows the different um, forest types on the on the property. The, um, about 60 60 percent of the property is is a riparian. I'm I'm sorry. Excuse me. Is, is, um, coniferous forest, and on this particular um, aerial, it's the um, it's the yellow property that are on either side of the west and the east side of the property. So. Um, it's covered by western larch, ponderosa pine, lodgepole pine, um, and 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 some Ingleman spruce. Uh, it was logged in sometime around 2003, um, and uh, and then uh, again in 2014 or 15. It actually has a, a stand of, of nice trees here. You can see, uh, and then there's about three to five acres on the western part of the property that's got some really nice larch that were were not logged back in the day. So the um, center part of the property, the green here, you see that kind of runs uh, like a band through the property. That's the riparian forest associated with the braided streams of, um, of Glacier Creek. Uh, this is uh, like a thick habitat has not been logged. Um, it's got um, just dense forest with Ingleman spruce and cottonwood. Um, it provides cover for wildlife, um, uh, given the fact that it's just it's it's so dense and and um, it's undisturbed. Here's a picture of that. You see the, the cottonwood gallery there and the spruce. So finally, in the center of the, of the property, you see the little blue patch. This is an area that's just um, annually wet and doesn't support you know, the larger trees. So this has got just a willow uh, and thin leaf alder. Um, it's got lots of sedge in there and it's just a really wet area um, uh, for, for, I'm sure in the past had beaver, beaver, um, beaver habitat and other types of, of um, you know, wetland. Um, animals. So because of the diverse stand and, and, and forest types in this area between the upland forest and the, the riparian habitat, there's um, just a lot of different wildlife that takes it, uh, advantage of it and that uses it. Um, the Montana Natural Heritage Program identifies 17 avian species, bird species uh, that are species of concern that are found in this, in this property. Um, 
There's a number of other animals, uh, including Canada lynx, little brown myotis, and western pygmy shrew that are listed. Um, anecdotally, there are lots of other um, wildlife that use the property between, you know, in, the grizzly bear, badger, gray wolf, and elk. Um, the landowner has got um, video um, evidence of, of, of grizzly bear, recent grizzly bear evidence. Um, Again, anecdotally, I don't have any maps that show collared data, but I got this from the Swan Bear Re Valley Resources. This was a this was a, a um, ten bears over a four year period that were radio collared, and it showed their their how they moved through the Swan Valley. If you look here, you can see the Mission Mountains on the um, on the left hand side, and then the Swan Mountains on the right hand side. So the valley floor. Uh, where you see the yellow is where the bear, bears have actually moved. And I, I located the, the Stoll property, which is really right in the center of all that activity. So this area, given its cover, is just a, an important wildlife um, property. So just briefly, to go over the permitted uses of the conservation easement that would um, protect this property, um, agricultural activities would be allowed, including timber management. Um, MLR considers um, commercial timber harvest of, you know, a, a critical tool for managing a property. Uh, a commercial timber harvest would require a plan that MRL, MRL would approve just to um, ensure that the conservation values are being protected. Um, water development would remain a, 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 a reserved right of the landowner. Uh, on the structure, that the easement would allow one building envelope, one five-acre building envelope with two, two residences, uh, at a minimum two. Uh, the land would transfer in one parcel only. It would always be uh, together, never be subdivided. Um, other activities like fences and roads would be controlled um, um, by the easement based on terms. Uh, and then there would be some commercial activities allowed that would not impact conservation values. Um, the landowner also um, you know, reserves uh, the, the option to have educational or scientific uses of the property for, for a university and other educational um, institutions. Uh, this map here shows the building envelope. It's in the, the yellow or the red cross hatch. Um, it'd be on kind of the northern portion of the property west of Glacier Creek. Prohibited uses would be subdivision of land, um, any alteration of land service of the waters, um, Jeff and Carol do own 100% of the mineral rights of the property with a, a, a mineral title search, uh, and they are going to extinguish all surface and subsurface mining. Uh, be no dumping or waste, no billboards, uh, utility you know, uh, transmission lines would be prohibited, as well as, as well as game, fur, and fish farms. Uh, so this is the budget. Um, this is the budget costs of this project. Um, Clark, I mean, um, uh, Perrick Nyberg's of Clark. Uh, Norman C. Wheeler Associates completed a final appraisal of the easement, uh, and so the final appraisal was at nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's the the value of the conservation easement. Uh, tra estimated transaction costs are going to be about fifty four thousand six hundred, and uh, so the total project cost with those two combined would be one million, uh, of one million dollars four hundred sixty thousand. So, that's the cost of the the project itself. As far as funding, anticipated funding, um, the landowner uh, would donate uh, the, the, the remaining value that's not compensated, which is uh, uh, with this estimate is $386,000. That would be a, a charitable donation. Um, we're requesting from Missoula County $300,000, which is roughly 29.8% of the, uh, the total cost of the, of the, of the project. Uh, MLR is um, our, our board of directors has um, dedicated to $200,000 for this project. Uh, we have a, um, a fund called the Schreier Fund. It's a fund that was donated and established by a, a gentleman who wanted to protect biodiversity in Western Montana. So um, it's dedicated just to purchase conservation easements on land that has high biodiversity. And the Swan Valley is just off the charts with biodiversity. It was a slam dunk for that project. Um, so we are bringing $200,000 uh, to this project. I just found out this morning, uh, the Heart of the Rockies uh, just emailed me this morning saying they committed, their board has committed $50,000 for this project. So um, that's another partner that's, uh, that thinks this is important. And finally, finally, Atira Foundation is a, is a smaller foundation uh, down in North Carolina, and they uh, like this project, and they've paid uh, $14,000 to cover and help with project costs and, and other, and other um, 
um, other costs. So um, as far as the funding goes, uh, um, the transaction costs, the landowner will pay uh, the, the, the transaction costs of 48,600, uh, which is roughly 4.8% 4, 4 of the project funding. And MLR, um, we will be you know, committing $8,000 in project costs for the, for the project for just our in-house project costs that we are not uh, seeking compensation for. So this is just a quick summary, which I basically already said, you know, as far as the total acres is 158 acres. The project cost is $1,046,000. Um, um, and we're requesting $300,000 from the Missoula County Open Space Bond. For a, 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 the county request, a percent of value is 29.9 or 30%. So I'd just like to review the, um, just the conservation value summaries um, uh, of this project and why it's important. So geographically, it's situated in the Swan Valley. Um, it's, a, it's an area that's already had extensive conservation and has been identified as a priority area for a number of conservation organizations, including MLR. Um, it, where it's situated right now, when you see the Forest Service in green now, um, it's, it's, it's in a bottleneck of Forest Service uh, and, and, and private land as far as providing um, animal, um, you know, animals moving between the Swan Range and Missing Range, uh, including for grizzly bears. Um, the public will see this property uh, uh, to the north of the property is Glacier Creek Road. Um, that's a county road, the, so the public will see that and, 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 and um, benefit from the scenic open space. And Styler Drive is on the east side of the property, also a, a public road. Uh, the public can also view this property when they're recreating on, the, the prop, uh, on, on Glacier Creek, which flows to the property. So, um, so by remaining in one parcel, this this will protect the, uh, this area from from subdivision. Um, the western side of the or the eastern side of the property uh, along Styler Drive, there's a little bench there. It could easily be developed uh, into home sites and have home sites um, subdivided all the way down on the property. So the easement in that respect is protecting that. Um, with a five acre building envelope, uh, the the rest of the property remaining open scenic open space, um, you know. With the five acre building, basically 97% of the property will remain, you know, forever protected in scenic open space. And with both banks of Glacier Creek um, and that the braided stream channel, um, it's just the, the, the right, the, the, basically the wildlife habitat is, is, is very important and critical. So, and by protecting the, the subdivision along the, the river, um, It'll protect the water quality of Glacier Creek and Swan River and 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 the downstream um, other resources. So, so that was kind of fast. I was trying to move it along. Um, I want to. I do want to. I know. Thank um, everyone here for the opportunity to present this project, and um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Mark. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this? And all. Thanks, Ron. Is it turned on? Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to say we're experiencing a lot of development pressure all around the Stoll's place and mine. I'm a immediate na neighbor. This morning, we still had a bear trap set up because of a grizzly bear that's become habituated somewhere in the valley. And the more we develop, the more people will have to learn how to manage their uh, attractants and the more bears will be in trouble. So. I've been waiting for this project for over 20 years, watching my Montana Land Reliance see how they could do. And I'm so thrilled and very happy and thankful to Jeff, Carol, and Wyatt Stoll. Thank you, Ann. Come on up. Oh, it's still on. Hi, my name is Jeff Stoll. Um, I just want to thank the commission um, and, and really the county for for a program like this. It it makes 
these decisions a lot easier for for us um, who are excited to to be able to conserve this land. I want to thank um, the folks on the Open Lands Committee who came out and, and spent so much time and, and the commissioners who came out and visited the property and have spent so much time on this project for us and, and obviously Mark and, and Kaylee as well for all the work that they've done. Uh, so my family and I just want to express our gratitude for even considering this project and um, we look forward to working with MLR and in, in conserving this. So thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Ron Slater again, and I am also a member of the Op uh, Missoula County Open Land Citizen Advisory Committee. This is what I am prepared for. <laughs> uh, if, uh, com our committee, committee members and staff and uh, county commissioners attended a site visit up there on Oct August the 29th. This parcel is unique in that it is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere. It's uh, in the upper reaches of Missoula County, and as Mark said, right in smack in the middle of grizzly bear habitat. Uh, this was a key point when we discussed this as a committee on September 12th. The parcel is mostly flat and is very, very uh, attractive for recreational development. Uh, the committee voted unanimously uh, that a conservation easement will keep the pristine area open in perpetuity for wildlife and for the other other uh, qualities that Kaylee and Mark mentioned. Therefore, the the Missoula County Open Land Citizen Advisory Committee would like to recommend that the county commissioners approve up to three hundred dollars or three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> of twenty eighteen open space bond funds for the purchase of the one hundred fifty eight acre Stowell Stowell easement request. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this in the room or online? Okay, well, oh, sorry, Kaylee, go ahead. Um, before we move on, I'll just give a brief a staff report. Oh, that's okay. Goodness gracious, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. I was happy to wait. Um, Per the 2000, per the interlocal agreement related to the 2018 open space bond, there's a process that has to be followed in the um, vetting of requests for spending open space bond funding. So I just want to cover a few of those um, high points to show how what that it's a relatively extensive process, and just to outline the process that um, this request has gone through before it got to the hearing today. So as um, Ron mentioned, the project was reviewed by the Open Land Citizen Advisory Committee over two separate meetings. And then that also included a site visit that um, the Board of County Commissioners joined on August 29th, 2024. And the recommendation from the Open Lands Committee was just um, presented by Ron and uh, a quorum of the Open Lands Committee did meet on September 12th, 2024 and voted unanimously to recommend approval. Just a few uh, high points from the staff analysis. So a few of the project points that really stood out were the location of the property as it's within an important wildlife corridor that's based on the proximity to other protected lands and public lands, and also Glacier Creek that flows through the property, which supports a healthy riparian forest and wetland habitat. This is really important for water quality and quantity of Glacier Creek, which is a tributary to the Swan River. Uh, based on staff analysis, the project meets two um, multiple purposes of the open space bond, conserving agricultural lands, fish and wildlife habitat, and rivers, lakes, and streams, as well as protecting scenic views. Um, prior, I also wanted to mention that prior to the public hearing, there were four public comments that were submitted via email, um, all of which were in support of the proposal and the requested funds. With that, uh, the Parks, Trails, and Open Land staff recommendation is for this project to be funded for up to $300,000 from the county's portion of the 2018 open space bond. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Oh, yes, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, Juana. Thanks, Kaylee. I just wanted to say a couple things. First, uh, um, thanks to the Stowell family for their uh, fantastic generosity here, not just in the donated part of the easement, which is impressive, but also in the transaction costs, which is real money, not just taking money off, but 
real money. And thank you for that. It's a huge act of generosity. And I appreciate when you said thank you to the county. And the way I, I want to choose to interpret that is not thank you to us or even to Kelly, super skilled staff person, but the county. In 2018, our residents voted to voluntarily, in this crazy time, voluntarily raise their taxes and put that money aside specifically for this type of purpose. And when those folks voted, they voted on ballot language that enumerated the kinds of projects that could be funded. And this is exactly that. It, it, it checks all the boxes. So thanks, Kaylee. Thanks to the Stoll family. Big thanks to all the people who live and vote here who overwhelmingly chose to voluntarily raise their taxes to do just this sort of thing. Mic drop. Oh, well, well said, and thank you. And thank you for making August 29th such a beautiful day with the first dusting of snow in the mountains and it, the uh, bare beds in the in the grass. And it, it was a yeah. it was a glorious day in the Swan. Yeah. Day. Well, thank you. Okay, any further comments? How about a motion? <laughs> it's a little language. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I'd move we adopt a resolution to expand up to 300,000 from the county's portion of the 2018 open space bond funds toward the purchase of a conservation easement on 150 acres near Condon, Montana for the Stoll open space bond project. Second, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we're adjourned. Enjoy your day. <laughs>